happy Christmas season, by the way. I got Christmas lights and I had several videos referencing the fact that it was now Christmas time that I scrapped. But yeah, I haven't talked to you guys in a few weeks, so um, hi. Now, Apple dropped quite a few software updates today, and I want to start with uh, perhaps a more niche one at first, which would be iOS 12.5. This update releases for the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 6 series, as well as the original iPad Air, iPad Mini 2, and 3, and the 6th generation iPod Touch. So basically every device that did not get iOS 13 last year uh, is compatible with this update, which is quite interesting, considering that that was not this year's update that they weren't compatible with last year's. It's been a whole year since these devices have been compatible with a main iOS update and Apple is still supporting them, which is pretty cool. Really the only feature in this update is COVID-19 contact tracing exposure notifications. If your state supports it here in Tennessee, unfortunately we don't have that. It just isn't a thing that you can go in and try to turn it on your phone and it says not compatible in your state. And it's like, great. So, but if your state does support that and you are still using an older iPhone, uh, the 5S or the 6 series, uh, you do have that ability now. I do believe that is exclusive to the iPhones though. So the um, aforementioned iPads will only be getting the security updates, which Apple gave uh, no details on. They just said it addresses a security vulnerability. No specific references to bug fixes or anything either. It seems to just be the exposure notifications and the patch security flaw. Now I have my iPhone 6 here, uh, which I got pretty much the year of launch, not the month of launch. I got it that December, so a few months after the iPhone 6's launch. And I used this phone actively for five years until I got my iPhone 11 Pro Max um, in December, which I have an unboxing of on the channel. A lot of you guys probably saw that because it's one of my more popular videos. So anyways, this phone right here holds a special place in my heart because I it was my primary phone for five whole years. I had a lot, a lot of time with this thing. And it is still fully functioning. So I'm ready to go ahead and install iOS 12.5 on this thing and see what we find out. Unfortunately, my old iPhone 6 happens to be 16 gigabytes. And as you can see here, that 16 gigabytes is almost completely full, harboring nothing other than the built-in applications and Geekbench, which is really unfortunate and one of the main reasons I upgraded and a main reason why I will never buy a base storage phone ever again. We're looking at about a 21 megabit connection over my home internet. Had to use the speed test website uh, since I don't have enough storage space to download the app on this device. So if we go ahead and pop back into software update, we're gonna go ahead and try to download and install and see what happens. So you can see we enter our passcode like usual and then get stuck on a loading screen. I have my Apple Watch here timing our progress conveniently on the table since I stupidly let it die during the day today and it has to recharge. That's why it's not on my wrist. As you can see, after almost a minute, the just kind of went back to the same screen we were on before. No error message or anything, which is kind of strange. We'll go ahead and try it again. And we experienced basically the same thing. After about a minute, the update just cuts itself off. This tells me it's probably a storage issue, although it's strange it didn't give me an error message as such. So I'll see what I can clear out and get back to you. I screenshotted what I needed from Geekbench in terms of stored scores and deleted it and deleted a few more of the proprietary built-in apps in iOS and managed to drop this phone down to 14.7 used gigabytes, which should give us a little bit more than a gigabyte over what we should need to update. So we'll go ahead and go try it again and hope it works this time. Clicking download and install again. And this time we are successful. It says update requested and it's getting ready to estimate our remaining time. And we can see our initial estimate of about 12 minutes remaining there, which is typical of a small bug fix update like this. It's interesting it didn't ask me to agree to the terms and conditions of an iOS and user license agreement, whatever the heck it's called. It usually does that. It didn't this time. Perhaps it only does it for major feature updates. And since there's no feature changes here other than the contact tracing, they didn't feel the need to push it through again. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't paid super close attention to when it shows up on uh, devices before, but we can see our time remaining is rapidly dropping down. So hopefully this goes by a little quicker than I expect. In other news, my TV's going berserk and I don't know what's wrong with it and I don't know how I feel about it. This is like seizure mode. I think I'm gonna unplug it. Due to an untimely issue with my home internet connection, I actually had to switch over um, to my cellular hotspot off of my phone, 
which is a much slower 7 megabits per second. So we should expect things to slow down quite significantly. And now after only about four minutes, we've entered the prepare update phase, and it seems to be moving through this one um, pretty dang fast. So three minutes, that's well ahead of the 12 minute estimate originally given for how long it would take for the download phase. And now we're in what seems to always be the longest phase that's a lie. It's nowhere near the longest phase. The installation is the longest phase, but we're the preparing the update at the moment. All right, we are into the installation phase. It only took about five minutes for us to get here, so this looks to be a very fast update. The installation is definitely running significantly slower than the initial download and the preparation. As you can see here, this is after about 15 minutes of just the installation, 20 minutes total since I pressed that download and install button. So now it's been about 21 minutes a minute since our last year, and it's already done upgrading to iOS 12.5. The bar wasn't even to the end of the screen yet, it just kind of jumped up here. Um, so after updating, if you go ahead and open up settings and scroll down, you'll see under emergency SOS, um, there is the exposure notifications button, which was not in iOS 12 before, but now it is. So if you happen to have an iPhone 5S or 6 and your state supports uh, contact tracing and exposure notifications in iOS, you can now do that. So you just click on that, it takes a second to load, then you can choose to turn on exposure notifications. But again, it's not available in my state, so it's just straight up not going to work. But I can go through the process just to show you. So it gives you the splash screen, and you can hit continue, and then you select that I'm in the United States. Then once I select that, it's going to ask my state or region, so we'll find Tennessee. Um, and then we will find out that exposure notifications are not available in Tennessee. So that's unfortunate. And that's it. That's really the only new feature in iOS 12.5. Other than those uh, security improvements. Looking at Geekbench scores, our single core score remained exactly the same, where the multi core score for the processor actually dropped by, I believe, 28 points if I did my math correctly. The graphics score, on the other hand, increased by one point. Of course, Geekbench scores can fluctuate slightly uh, between tests due to things like the temperature of the device, remaining battery power, memory usage, etc., etc. So they're never really fully indicative of how a software and firmware actually changes how the processors function, uh, but I think it's safe to say um, in this circumstance that things remain about the same, if not drop a little bit on the multi-core side of things, but you're not really losing all that much uh, by updating here. And that is pretty much it for iOS 12.5. Very small and simple update, not really much of anything to it. If any of you are still using an iPhone 5S, iPhone 6 series, um, iPad mini 3 or 4, original iPad Air, or, um, iPod Touch, whatever the heck generation it was that uh, actually supports iOS 12.5 and does not have support for 13 and 14, I'd be interested to hear in the comments below what your perspectives are on this update since you um, are going to be using it much more heavily than I am just randomly whenever I decide to boot up my 6 to check it out every once in a while. Otherwise, Apple has released uh, several more software updates yesterday by the time I upload this video, and so I'll be covering those very, very soon uh, whenever you're watching this video. Um, I'll, I'll be actively working on uh, those other software update videos, so uh, keep an eye out for that if you're interested to see uh, my uh, videos. And other than that, hopefully going into the Christmas season here, finally done with uh, school and exams and all that stuff. So hopefully I'll actually be able to have some more consistent content like we were looking at a few weeks ago, and I'll be pushing that out to um, you all. So I just want to go ahead and give a quick thank you uh, to um, all of you who have found this channel and watched my videos. I know it's not very many of you um, and compared to a lot of uh, bigger YouTubers. I mean, this is infinitesimally small what I'm doing here, but uh, maybe we'll get up there one day. But right now I'm just happy to have you guys and I'm happy to be where I am right now because I enjoy what I'm doing and that's about all that matters. So Hopefully see you guys again very, very soon.